accepted the changes on Article 4, so I included Okay, that. yeah, that's great. Okay. All signed. Okay. And on Article 7, yes. we are, we will agree to your proposal to be to limit relief employees to step two of the grievance procedure. Okay. Provided in a, it says employees shall not be disciplined. Line out the full time so that the, gotcha. the just cause standard applies to them also. Excellent. So we have that argument available to us through step Excellent. two. Excellent. That's exactly what I was going to propose. Good. Then, then, then we're, then we're, good, then we're Perfect. good with that approach also. Okay. All right. All right. We can make copies of those when we break. Okay. okay I'm going to set them like this. Okay. That way they don't get caught up in everybody's paper. Now um, we have counters to your counters. Okay. tried to highlight the either change either anything that was changed or not accepted I tried to highlight those provisions and and then I accepted and cleaned up anything that we were in agreement on okay. like to walk through them yes okay that would be good. Um, on the article 2 I tried to address the benefits portion by simply saying they may not be eligible the other alternative I could suggest is to simply mark out and delete that end of the sentence and end it with month I know what we're fine with them, may not, because obviously there okay. are some that's what benefits I thought. they are not eligible for. So that's, okay. that's fine. Okay. And that gives us an agreement on that. Okay. Um, the next one, I wanted to suggest a, just a different severability clause uh, under 3.03. That's fine. Okay. It's pretty standard. Yeah, um, no, that's, that's fine. The next 3.05, I had a, a revised mm -hmm. paragraph to propose. Okay. Now, we, did ha we do have an MOU amending Article 3.05. I believe that was incorporated okay. into this. Okay, all right, that's fine. If it's not, let me know. And I, I did include the 15-day the notice and so forth. Improvised. Now, if, if, the, if the new sentences, Kristen, that you added to this, if where you say county policies and impacts, if that is both the Board of County Commissioners and the department policies, then I'm fine with what you proposed here. Departmental SOPs it creates an issue in terms of having to impact bargain the change in a departmental SOP. And if that's the case, if we have to reopen negotiations every time a departmental SOP may change, then it would potentially have to go back to the board for approval. And that's my concern. I was trying to specify county policies The problem, and, and the problem that arose, and the reason why that MOU was reached, is because the department was changing. I have no I can't read that. <laughs> the 
this does not limit issuance of operational directive. So how do you distinguish between <coughs> operational directive and an SOP or a rule? That's what, I, that's what I'm kind of I mean, struggling with here. It has to do with protocols and stuff like that. We don't have any, those clearly are not what we're talking. We're talking about department policies that impact mandatory subjects of bargaining. Okay, and I have no issue with that. Okay. That, I agree. So as but long as we're trying to, to avoid, yeah. uh, you know, ha yeah. having to yeah. potentially bargain, yeah. like, as you're saying, change in, in protocols, yeah. management yeah. rights that yeah. would pertain yeah. to the operation. No, all, all, our only concern is if they impact mandatory subjects of bargaining, there was some circumvention by the, the, the prior folks who administered the department. Okay, um, I understand. Utilizing their ability to develop departmental rules and skirt the obligation to negotiate changes in mandatory social bargaining. I mean, if we're talking about, you know, wages, benefits, yeah, yeah, uh, I, yeah, scheduling, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. hours, things and that, like and that. that. Was, and that was what was happening, and that was the reason why it became an issue. And, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I can work with that. Okay. <laughs> what the doctor said too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. That's yeah. That's you're right. That's what doctors say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I don't know. Okay. May I keep this coffee? Yeah, you have a. Can we put it yeah, on the stack and copy it? You keep that. I'll All right. Print up another. Okay. Okay. So okay. Put it in and we can okay. copy it. Okay. okay. I'll I'll work on that language. Okay. Okay. Grievance procedure. Um, in your proposal, you <coughs> struck these two sentences that are highlighted, and I wasn't certain why, um, and particularly because actually. The fact that the grievance has to identify the article and section that the alleged to be violated is reiterated in a separate section, and perhaps well, in, I did that only because they were lined out in in your in your proposal, Kristen. I simply I, I simply agreed to your hmm. proposal. Okay, I well uh, this I'd like to keep that, and I I don't, I don't know what happened. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, that's the, from April. Yeah, that's from April. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, if, if we could, I mean, I, I don't find, think that that's objectionable to include um, if you don't have an issue with it. No, I, I don't. And as I said, okay. the, only, the only reason they were lined out in my no problem to you was because they were lined out in your proposal, too. Got it. Um, okay. Uh, next page. I We would like to propose making the oral discussion, the meeting with your supervisor, a mandatory step that begins the grievance process instead of just making it optional. To me, that would seem beneficial to the employee and to management, uh, that you start at the lowest level, obviously, and try and resolve the conflict. Um, so that's the change here. Shall, uh, within five days after the event, uh, present the grievance to your supervisor for informal discussion. Then, if you don't resolve it at that meeting, which you're at the five-day mark, you've got five more days with the clock ticking on 10 days to initiate a formal grievance in writing. We stuck with the 10 days because that's consistent with all the other contracts, okay. and we're trying to create some consistency because it gets really confusing when you've got 10-day limits, five days, 15 days, and all the different contracts. And from there, it just progresses as, as it always has. Yeah. Um, in the arbitration section, I wanted to be more specific than just saying the B, that you submit the request to the BCC, and I replaced it with county administrator, just so that there is a definite point of contact. Um, you know, you don't want something like that to get lost in the shuffle. Um, the problem with the two business days of the party selection is whoa, whoa, whoa. That you, you just oh. jumped. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. I, I, 
You're not paying attention no, to what I'm I, saying, are you? <laughs> <laughs> he is focused. I am. I'm. Uh, I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to see. I so far I don't have any. I, we don't have any issues with 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 withering up until. Um, okay. I I tried to address what we discussed uh -huh. yesterday mm -hmm. because my concern and why I was trying to interject time mm -hmm. limits, as I said, mm -hmm. was to kind of be sure that both parties were on board with moving the process along uh -huh. and not just sitting on it. Right. So. You've invoked the, the arbitration mm -hmm. process. Yeah. You've sent the notice. You sent the form to FMCS to request a panel. You get the panel back, and then you have to Stand contact down. the other party, and you have to agree and strike names. Mm -hmm. Then you select one. Okay. So you must select an arbitrator within 10 days of receiving the list. Then the party who invoked arbitration, which is usually the union, mm -hmm. You have a form that comes with your panel, and you, one uh, one of the parties, can sign off on it and say, okay, we agreed to this arbitrator, and then you email it back to FMCS. You can mail it, too. Most people email it these days. Email it back, and then they contact the arbitrator and appoint them, and the arbitrator contacts you. I've had instances where nobody lets fmcs know and it just hangs out there that's what i'm trying to avoid here and i don't think it's that hard to expect in two business days that one of the parties can get the form the problem returns. is it is that hard because once we're at that level it's not done by anybody local here or even by how my, long does it need to take it's done by our legal department and i can't commit them to two days i mean well how long two weeks to email a form they they represent locals all over the country and all I ever hear from them is how busy they are well I'll tell you what they have to contact me to strike names mm -hmm. and I'll let them know that in this contract they have X number of days and if they can't the do that days. then I'll tell them that I'll return it because I can do it too and I can revise it to say that and I can do it in two days Just two days. If, if I tell if me I, how many days, uh, two weeks. Two and calendar. Two so calendar. So fourteen. Weeks. Yeah, fourteen calendar days. Yeah. Well, that seems excessive. How about one week? I know. I, I'm. No, if we. They. Our attorneys are representing people. All we have, two attorneys who are primarily assigned to. Well, actually, three because we have one in California who are primarily assigned to our. IAP division locals mm -hmm. and do their work and we have what 80 IAP locals Mike around the country uh, about 85, 90. yeah tell you what why don't we say that we agree to select an arbitrator within 10 business days okay and we agree to submit the form within 10 business days that's two weeks okay you got it okay I can I can live with that and you're saying we as in either side, or you're saying no, we I, as in you and the frog in your pocket? <laughs> I mean, the parties, which yeah, means so, me yeah, that's and what I'm whomever right. they okay. contacts right. me from the IAEP. Okay. Um, and the frog in my pocket as well. Yes. yes. <laughs> We're all in agreement. Okay. I can live with that. And then because that did address my concern, I took out on the next page the need to have yeah. a, a defined period to schedule. Because I understand your concern, too, right. about the fact that sometimes it's the arbitrator that's difficult to schedule. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. Um, on the next page, I added in some language um, relating to the process itself. Mm -hmm. I did add back that arbitrations will be recorded. Mm -hmm. And we would like for the losing party to pay the court reporter's fee. I think we discussed that. Mm -hmm. I also tried to address your concern about whether a grievance is voluntarily withdrawn, mm -hmm. and and I, I kind of reworded it a little. If you're okay with that, yeah, I'm fine with I'm fine with seven. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still having an issue with if an arbitrator, despite the fact that the party says we're recording it anyway. Well, if we record it, we don't. I mean, if we have a court reporter, we don't really need to record it. It's we could, but and we, we certainly can. We could, but if but if we're going to record it and that's sufficient mm -hmm. for for us for us, mm -hmm. 
and the, not, the arbitrator says, no, I like to have a court reporter in the transcript. Well, the loser's going to have to pay for the arbitrator, too. I just feel like if you lose, you pay the costs, period. Why should we have to split the uh, court reporter? You had to have an arbitrator, too. That's true. Um, on 10, I just wanted to have the option because um, it can cut costs. If you have an issue of arbitrability, I don't have a bifurcate. problem really with bifurcating an arbitrability issue. I don't have a problem with doing it by a conference call if possible. Okay. The problem is setting these kind of time limits on arbitrators. You and I both know that an arbitrator shall have 10 days from the hearing to render a decision on arbitrability. Well, the arbitrator on the whole case has a deadline as well. Yes, which they, for the most part, ignore. Um, Never had one again. Oh, really? No. I said to me, most arbitrators do things on they that they may try to. Well, on such a, yeah. a narrow yeah. issue and a phone conference, how many days do you think they should have? I would think they could do it in ten days. Well, then let's. Um, that will put them on a timeline. If they don't, we I don't know. All right. What the heck? Bottom line is. They're going to make their decision when they make the decision. The That's fact true. That our contract says they're going to issue <laughs> right. within ten days. Well, just yeah. like yeah. the other deadline, yeah. Yeah. we say they have yeah. thirty days, yeah. but yeah, the reality is. Yeah. And based on our discussion under five point zero five, I agreed to strike the consent portion. Let me, um, let, when we caucus, let me read through okay. this. It's, it's, okay. Uh, um, nine is just standard language. I don't, I don't think that's objectionable. Um, that's. And as I indicated earlier, we're fine with your proposal or not at the seven. Where, you know, we've agreed to add okay. back in B mm -hmm. yes. and we're fine with, you know, full time being, okay. being struck. So okay. we're good with Article 7. Okay. Did you want to go ahead and sign Articles 1 and 2 as well? Uh, yeah. Okay. No, actually, let me go back and do that. Okay. Okay, miscellaneous. Um, we were not able to accept the um, change to add back uh, to reference the shift swapping division policy in the contract. Um, and we did not include under mandatory training classes that attendance would be considered time worked if the county provided the training. issue with 1504 depending on what we do with 3.05 because clearly shift swaps are a mandatory subject of bargaining and if the department isn't allowed to unilaterally make changes that affect mandatory subjects of bargaining I don't it really isn't necessary for us to reference the policy because if they're going to change it they're going to have to negotiate over it but if 
we don't resolve 3.05, then 1504 is clearly, deleting that is clearly problematic. Um, we'll take that into consideration. Right. And we'll, we'll discuss 1506. Okay. We added in the hourly probationary period for relief employees, but then included language that would require a relief employee to start fresh as a full-time employee with a six-month probationary period. And we'll, we'll, we'll discuss mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. The language that I proposed in 20.02, my intent is to accommodate the obligation to impact bargain, but then if we do not include any reopeners to otherwise not reopen anything for the term of the contract, and I think that's standard. So this would be contingent upon what we agree to in the duration provision. So the problem with your 20.02, if it didn't have whether or not referred to or covered by this agreement, I would have no issue with it whatsoever. Unless otherwise I'm, provided for herein, which accommodates impact bargaining or anything else that's referenced in the contract on how, as a reopener. Depending on how we resolve 3.05 or anything, okay. you know, I mean, but in general, though, that those words in this, in this phrase. This is are, our standard totality right. provision. Right. Except uh, standard totality provisions. Accommodate though, impact bargaining it, it, and anything it, else in the contract it, it, that specifies we agree to reopen. It, it, no, the, sta the standard totality agreement and the only kind that I ever agree to are that once the parties reach an agreement, we will, we agree unless we mutually agree to do it, we will not reopen the collective bargaining during its term unless there's a specific reopen a provision in the contract. That's exactly what this but says. No, because you say whether or not referred to are covered by this agreement. So that Unless language is otherwise provided for herein. But if it isn't covered in the contract, there may not be a provision within the the What we're saying is we had the chance to sit down and bargain everything we wanted to bargain. Mm -hmm. And unless we say in the contract that we agree to reopen mm -hmm. this subject matter and bargain it during the term Game over to Again, the and I have no issue with that. That's but what adding, this says. No, when you add in the whether or not, it's an attempt to preclude midterm bargaining on anything. That and is the intent, except what we agree to reopen and bargain that's addressed in the contract. Except when the statute requires advance notice and an opportunity to bargain when an employer makes a change. That's impact that. bargaining, and that's covered. Yes, but where is it covered? That's what's in it is in 3.05 as long as we haven't agreed on that provision yet. So why don't we put that on hold? Okay. All right. Okay. Then why don't we caucus? Okay. Are you guys comfortable in your room that you were using yeah. yesterday? Okay. Yeah. Okay. They had, they had to swap over. Yeah, it's, it's the room next door. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. okay. We revised in Article 3, uh, 3.05 for you to consider. All right.
Oh, yeah, that's that's fine. Okay. That's, that's perfect. Okay, I was trying to strike a balance. That, you know, that's, no, that's 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 perfect. Where, okay. where uh, I will sign it. And Great. page oh <laughs> why is that in my hand <laughs> right. okay so we've got 5 12 15 and 18 19 20 yes on five grievance procedure mm -hmm. we um we have two things that would we I can just get the here we go. In 503E, the oral discussion section, mm -hmm. we would we propose to add a provision that says if the employee chooses, he or she may have a union representative well, present fine. during the informal discussion. Yeah. Uh, just. And that may have already been. We can well, no, unfortunately, when you said the employee shall designate if they're going to have a union, but it says. At step one, and oh, okay, okay, the, the aura that I, I thought initially it was covered yeah. in it, but mm -hmm. no problem. Okay, and then the only other thing we we talked about in four B, uh, ra rather than the ten calendar days and then two business days, changing it all to ten business days Got there it. in that section. Got it. If we can agree to that, we're fine with the grievance procedure. Okay. And that takes us to 15 well oh wait 12 seven. but you didn't give us a 12 no I'm fine with the rest of the rest of it the okay. rest of the rest okay. of the grievance procedure is Got I'm, it. I'm fine with okay. uh, well let me there are some of the things I'm not particularly fine with but I but, but I'm willing to accept You'll live so, with it. yes I'll, okay. I'll live with it Got yes. it. okay um, article 15 because we have resolved us uh, 3.05 we can agree to delete 1504 Okay. <clears throat> and in 1506, we, 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 we want to preserve the current practice, which is during county-provided training, employees receive straight-time training pay when they attend those classes. I, and I mean, if the county's concern was that our original proposal that it, they'd be paid for such time might result in them being paid overtime, no. All we want to do is maintain the current practice that employees get paid and I think it's, you guys refer to it as training pay, correct? Yes. Um, straight time for that. They don't get, currently, they don't get that. They Jimmy? Just, sorry? Currently, they don't get paid for, they, this is strictly for the requirements for their paramedic license, correct? They, they have not in the past gotten paid for ACLS. Or a CPR. CPR. They don't pay that right now, so your comment kind of okay. made the question. Okay, that's why I asked specifically, do they do they currently provide you the classes that they, are required? They pay for the classes course. are required. They pay for the course. But, that, but then I also asked, work. and do they right. pay you for attendance at those classes? And, yeah. and There was questions at one point in time. Let's, we'll, we'll, we'll caucus. Okay. okay, got it. Currently, we do not, as I've been here, there has never been anybody paid to attend ACLS or CPR because those classes are required for the certificate of that individual. The training they get paid for is a, is a bi-monthly for any type of in-service training that we require Correct. them to be at. But we that, do, we do pay for, for CEUs, which is required to renew your license. It, it, it does count towards CEUs. Mandatory in services do provide CEUs, but there is also other ways to get CEUs. But we do provide the CEUs to mandatory in service track. All right, to be continued. Yes. Okay. Probation. <coughs> is it just two of the, is it just, um, Pals and which two do CPR you know? CPR and ACLS. Is, ACLS. ACLS okay. is needed okay. for paramedics. 
CPR is needed for paramedics and uh, EMTs. PALS at one time was mandatory from a different medical director, but PALS is no longer required for, for uh, an employee to have to, to maintain their certifications. So it's just ACLS and you know, CPR are required to maintain certifications, and but you don't pay the training pay for attendance at those? We provide the course, but they have right. not gotten paid a, 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 an hourly wage okay. to attend. Okay. All right, um, then we're left with probation 18. We do, whether or not they do their probationary period of 1,092 hours as a relief employee or they do it six months as a full-time employee, we don't think it's fair that an employee who as a relief employee has served the same amount of probationary time as a full-time employee if the county makes a determination that, you know, they're, they're a good employee, we want them as a full-time employee, they go full-time, that they should have to repeat the probationary period and become an employee at will again for another six months. Because they've already, I mean, they've already had the same amount of time to assess their performance as if they had been hired as a full-time employee. That's, I mean, the 1,092 hours is equivalent to six months of full-time employment. You, I mean, the county has already had a sufficient amount of time to assess their performance and you know, determine that they have the requisite skills to, to, to do the job required, and they shouldn't then be required to repeat a probationary period because they go from relief to Okay, we, we understand. Yeah. Um, we'll <laughs> article 19 is duration, and that's Correct. obviously Correct. We're skipping. Yeah. And Article 20. Since we have resolved 3.05, I can accept your proposal in Article 20. Okay. Great. Um, I can revise the discipline paragraph when we break okay. and um, have that ready to sign off Okay. On. All right. Or excuse me, grievance. Grievance, grievance yes, procedure. Yeah, yeah. There's just the two. There's the oral yes. discussion, and then there's the four B, the the change in the time frames there. Yes. And everything else, Kristen, will okay. We're yes. good with. Okay. Got it. Yeah. I didn't have it. So let me do. Uh, let me TA Article Twenty. So now we have to caucus on 15, and then we have, I think, just what, wages and? Duration. Duration. And duration. All right. Let us take a, a brief caucus. Do you guys want to break for lunch, or? What's yeah, do you want to do you want to go you want to grab lunch? We only got These are your copies of oh, the great. Thank most you. recent TAs to go. Mm -hmm. I have a revised version and final form of article 5. All right. Copies for our one. trick-or-treaters we'll get to see are they doing that at the county building down there really if they do it all all on Palafox <coughs> yeah and we're gonna have some cool. candy out for them and stuff we um 
What is the law firm that's right there? The guy with the van, Azor. Zarzer. Yeah. He was supposed to have a big thing. Joe Um, Zarzer. Yeah, he was supposed to have a big thing yesterday, but they got rained out. Oh. So. um, Yeah, he always does a lot of stuff for gallery nights too. Yeah. His office is on the corner, right next to uh, what was the subway. Subway. Yeah. Subway closed. Oh, he's right there on Mm Palafox. Oh, oh. he's upstairs. Right. Mm -hmm. That used to be network telephone back in the day. Old. what was his name? Um, Ray Russenberger? There you go. Yeah. Ray. yeah. yeah. He's still around, he actually. Across this, this he's got his, Vermont. I mean, Ray is like this. I mean, he's got hands in everything. Yes, he's he does. Very smart. Mm-hmm. Very smart. Yeah, we had a piece of property. <laughs> Not me personally, I mean the county. Okay, yeah. We're good. good. Let okay. Me sign, let me sign this then. All right. Oh, they do. I mean, not this time of year, do they? Mm-hmm. Don't they they canceled the last one because of the rain. No, no, no. I mean, th- weren't they kind of trending towards shutting it off at like November just because of the weather? The main street. I don't know. Parkhawks. I thought they, they did that last year. The Maybe well, so. it's Foo Foo Fest. So we now have Foo Foo Fest where downtown's being decorated for the arts. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty cool. It is cool. I saw something yesterday. You remember when they had, I don't know if they still have it down there, but the umbrellas? Yeah, now it's the, yeah. yeah. Watching that move, man, that was cool. I, didn't, I was wondering what it looked like in the rain. So I glanced to my rear view mirror because we were parked there waiting for this, um, waiting for that thing yesterday. And uh, it is cool to watch that thing. What was your bar bill? I haven't seen it move. Yeah. I've only seen it early in the morning. Right, when it's still. Is it on like um, Two for one. some kind of... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how it does. Like I said, I caught it in the rear room, <coughs> but it does. It undulates. Yeah, oh, it's my gosh. Cool. No, when I see it, it's like usually 6 in the morning, yeah. 6.30 in the morning, oh, really? and I haven't seen it. It's gotcha. um, very cool. That's cool. Well, mm-hmm. when they brought us the plans, it looked like it was going to be cool, but I was like, oh, we need to make sure risk management signs off on this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on 1506, we, um, we recognize that the training pay does, is not paid for ACLS and CPR. We would like to put a provision in that says that the, the practice of training pay for the courses that are currently paid will continue for, for, the, for the courses other than uh, ACLS and CPR. What is that? Are those currently paid for? Yeah, I think that's what we yeah. were. All okay. of the other classes that are required to go to, we pay for them to go, except for the ACLS. Yeah. 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 So they're on the clock and the training is paid for all That's of correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. So, so we, and we just want to memorialize that practice, so not extend it to the ACLS and the gotcha. CPR. Okay. All right. Continue as usual. We yeah. will pay paramedics to take files. Um, Wait, are they on the clock? For files? We're not talking about paying for the course. We're talking about are they on the clock? For houses, we'll be the only ones that we don't. The only ones that they take that they're not on the clock are ACLS, ACLS and CPR. CPR, which is also called BLS. BLS. Gotcha. Yeah. So those two courses right there, we we don't. For anything else, that we and they can get those elsewhere if they wanted to. Right? They they do, but they but it would cost them. them. We oh, yeah, we don't want to do that. So our understanding is that we are not allowed to go outside of the training center. Now, you are on those classes as long as you have consent from the medical director. It's usually. So we are compelled to use this training. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. probably why it doesn't cost you either. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a benefit. For sure. But so in service days, you are. That's paid. Correct. Correct. <coughs> so continue so as usual, basically. Uh, yeah. Um, unless you want to, you have language to propose. Otherwise, I can come try to come up with something. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say that the um, the parties agree that the uh, practice of uh, paying for uh, paying employees for attendance at um, county provided training courses other than ACLS and CPR okay. shall continue. Because my understanding is that is, in fact, the practice. They, 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 are, they are given training pay for attendance at courses, except for ACLS and CPR. You good with that? Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> 
<coughs> and that leaves us only with the probationary period, which we told you what our position on that is. We need to know what your position is on our rejection of the the repeat probationary period if an employee goes from relief to full time. And then Article 12 and Article 19. What you got for 12 and 19? We, you already have our proposal on 12. And since our, our proposal on 12 is basically just for, for the first year, um, we didn't even think of what we wanted beyond that. So basically, I suppose our position then on Article 19 would be a one-year contract if we only did. On duration? Yeah. The, I don't have a recent wage proposal. No, it's the one that we submitted in January. <clears throat> hmm. I think it was 18 and... 14 for EMTs, 18 for paramedics. Right. And fifty across the board for EMTs and $2 for paramedics. Do you have a, sorry? Do you have a current, a recent, a fresh copy? I'm having trouble finding it. Yeah, let me, uh, Renee will make copies. <coughs> when they bring it back, let's go discuss these three. Okay. Was it, I was going to say, was it in Appendix A earlier? No, yeah, this was a proposal that they gave. But yeah, what, it, it, it was, was actually <coughs> before I ever attended a bargaining right. session. Um, and I had a yeah. copy of it at one point. But, okay. but it was in a proposal for Appendix A because at that time. That's what I was wondering. <coughs> yeah, the, the wage rates were contained mm -hmm. in Appendix A. So. Mm -hmm. I seem to find it. Well, it's relatively straightforward. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, well, Renee, I Renee just made copies mine's anyway. All so. Mine's yeah. all written up. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. Higher to our oh, uh, go. conference. Go. No, that's okay. We'll we'll, okay. we'll go. I would. Okay, we have um, yet another counter on probationary period and miscellaneous benefits pertaining to the oh. training.
Does that work? It does. Excellent. So that's that's. Oh no, I'm. Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm yeah, you're looking at the wrong one. That's exactly what we okay. said we wanted. Yes. I mean, just make sense. the 19, 1,092 hours. That's exactly what we wanted. After transitioning to full time, so they'd have to yeah. review. No, no, they no, have no, to no, complete no, no. the relief probation, right. not start a new 1,092. Yeah. They the have intent. to complete the 1,092 yes. hours. So their total probationary period yes. would be 1,092. What? Whatever they started as if, a relief, if they do less they than 1,092 as relief, They'll complete they the 1,092 the hours after going to full time. Correct. That's exactly what we asked for. So we're, we're, we're good. I'm going to sign that one off. You okay? Yeah. Okay. If, if you want to try and add language to clarify, but that is our intent as no, well. No, no, Kristen, it is. No. I see it. I see it. Yeah. 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 I know yeah. what yeah. your, I know your reservation was. Do you need us to clarify? No, no, we'll be required to complete the relief probationary period of 1,092 hours. After, tra yeah. if okay. they've already completed before transferring to full time, They're their done. probation is done. They have to complete the 1,092 hours after they transfer. If it was already done before they transfer, there's no more probationary period. They're good period. to go. So yeah. they yeah. part time? Or they have to do 92, time, yeah. 92 hours. yeah. So the yeah, intent I mean, is either six months in duration or 1,092 right. hours, which is the equivalent of six months. Right. right. Okay. That's right. exactly what we all intend. And that's just what it says. Okay. 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 All right. Now it leaves us the good stuff. I know. Um, <laughs> did we? Those are the ones we from need last to time. Yeah, okay, so we yeah. still need a we need a copy of Article Five of the mm -hmm. TA, yeah. and we'll need a copy of Fifteen and, a and copy Eighteen of Eighteen. Three. Okay, I just did that one. Okay. Okay, we're down to salaries and duration. Duration. Yeah. He, he did come back. <laughs> hey. So what language do we have for duration? Well, well you have a proposal that was it's, it's for it's three years. Year. Yeah. Yeah. But with no reopeners or anything. Our, our preference would not be to do a wage reopener, which is why right. if we only do one year of wages, we just want a one year contract. Because yeah. the, the wage reopeners tend to get uh, lost and in, in, in uncompleted, uh, particularly and it, I, I'm honest with you, it's only because the current contract, which is the first contract, the county was knew it was commissioning the Evergreen uh, wage study. Mm -hmm. So we did a wage reopener to await the results of that study. Mm -hmm. um, and then whatever adjustments were necessary based on that study, the wage reopener would figure out a way to implement mm -hmm. and what we were going to do for wage increases based on the study. Mm -hmm. But the county commissioners could never figure out what they wanted to do to implement the study, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it, it nothing ever got accomplished with, with with that. So, so that's why you're hesitant to yeah, say. That's why the, we're. Yeah. That's why you're hesitant to say do a three year, but with re, the, with ways reopeners, reopeners. In the second and third. Yeah. Okay, so that's yeah. why. Yeah. Okay, I just yeah. need to understand. Yeah. So I think you all know that um, the commission gave us the 3% mm -hmm. to offer, but we now have something more substantial in terms of, okay. you know, a lot of a lot of negotiated work okay. that we can take to them and provide to them. Okay. Um, and I, we have not had executive session with them to go over 
um, the documentation that we okay. currently have. All right. And so that'll be the first thing we'll do is we'll need to get back with them and talk to them about that. Okay. And, um, you know, I, I also have to make sure that uh, I have all the calculations of this whenever I provide it okay. to them. So that's the main thing. All right. So you're going to need to go back and approach the Board of County Commission. I do. Yes, all they've, and I've, I have asked to make sure, okay. but all I've been given the liberty of was the 3% that was prior okay. to my coming right. here. We certainly do not want to foreclose anything more substantial than that, so we yeah, will. Yeah, I understand. Um, do, you, do, you, do you have a rough time frame of how much time you think uh, you need? Well, so almost every week I have different union mm -hmm. negotiations, and so um, I may take a couple of them at one time to them, so it may be a couple more weeks. Okay. Before um, I can get an answer from them. Okay. Do I do try and give them a substantial you, update individually. You set a date? in the with the expectation that you'll have an answer i mean we always we can always cancel it if if, if it wouldn't be fruitful if you don't have any well the only problem i don't have my my calendar is probably not the calendar that we should be using at this moment to look at because <laughs> you won't be happy with the answer <laughs> you probably need to give me a little bit of time to work with Kristen and my and my assistant okay. on that all right i'm guessing that we, we were, I think, took your last open date in December for the firefighter, so it's probably going to be January. That's the, that's part of the uh, issue. Answer, I don't have a lot of open dates. between Either. I do have two weeks, one in November and one in December, where I I have offered them to other places that have not finalized them yet, so I, mm -hmm. I do have some. But if you don't have any dates in December, it's... I mean, I, that's where yes. I, well, I have the situation saying. where I have five unions that yeah. have it, and so well, and a lot of them the take two days. The case, can we can we set a date in January just so? I don't I don't see how I could do that. Okay, all right. Not not because I don't want to. It's honestly because I really do need to sit down with my assistant. Okay, right. because I have to you know right. book a long time. Well, maybe so it's if you could reach out to Mike then yes. when you when you guys know mm -hmm. yes. what. What will work for you and offer us some potential dates? Yes. And then, okay. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Um, so we will hold those two articles, duration yep. and wages, and um, and await. Uh, you know, and if I could get copies and, of the yes. last three that I don't yes. have copies of the yes. TAs. Yes. But I, I would like to ask if, um, if there is... I know that you have a lot of messages that you would probably really like me to share with the commissioners, okay. but if you have a specific message that you would like me to share um, regarding your the scale the scale that you've provided, I'd love to. I'm going to be as respectful as possible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, I've been an employee here for five years. Uh -huh. I came back and took a 60% pay cut to come back to the county. Mm -hmm. um, so at the point where I'm at now, I can leave today. Mm -hmm and walk in with zero experience at, the, at two counties over, mm -hmm. both Santa Rosa and Okaloosa, mm -hmm. starting day one at what we've asked for. Okay. Uh, and I've, that's why I wanted to ask you this question, because right. I thought I've, it was important that I... And, and I am by far the tip of the spear. I mean, you know, we have a lot of very faithful, hardworking employees here mm -hmm. who we want to keep. We want these people here. Mm -hmm. Scambia used to not have issues with retention. There used to be a two-year waiting list to work mm -hmm. here. I know. When I started here, I had to work for free for a year before I could get a part-time position here. Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> well, I do appreciate you sharing that. That's important. All right. The Evergreen study was done before you're looking at the $18 and the 1857 mm -hmm. of the surrounding counties. Okay, 1857? Yes. Okay. So that'd be Okaloosa, so. And that's starting. Starting. Yeah. Day one. Do you guys know right off the top of your head how much starting pay is, say, like, at home? Since no, sir. Where is this? Um, <coughs> Just throwing it out there. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, from what I understand, though, Okaloosa runs almost exactly 50% less calls than we do volume-wise. And they are at eighteen something an hour. Eighteen fifty-seven, I think, is what I said. Mm -hmm. That's the next. That's the next county over. Mm -hmm. right? It's two counties it's two over. Counties. But I. But I. So I will just share with you that, in my opinion, um, 
to me as I'm doing analysis, geographic, you know, proximity. I appreciate that there were these other studies that have been done, but to me, I think geographic proximity is probably going to be right. my best indicator right. because you can Absolutely. live here and work in Mobile, Absolutely. and you can live here, and you could work in Destin, right? Destin might be kind of far, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah. but you could feasibly, right. and so to me, and we have employees who do. Yes. They do the reverse. Mm -hmm. You know, they yeah. I pulled up. I actually pulled up our employees as we're looking at benefits to see how many employees we had that live in Alabama right. and that work in. And I'm about yeah. to be one of those employees. You know, we have oh. land in Alabama, so oh. I mean, you know, the 45 mm -hmm. minute drive. You know. Yeah, I understand. Well, I do appreciate your candor, and that's why I wanted to ask. Is there anything else? That's, I mean, I'm sure there's probably a lot else, but mm -hmm. I did want to make sure I asked that before I. I just I. I constantly say that I have 25 years left, and that's mm -hmm. almost a commitment to myself that I will retire from Escambia. Mm -hmm. But I understand. I, I appreciate that. All right. Well, I want you to know that I heard what you said, and I do appreciate it. Okay. And I will. We will look at our calendar. Kristen. Kristen is very vigilant to stay on top of us right. to make sure that I respond. Good. To the request. <laughs> she is. Good. Lines. We're yes. Aware. She's very yeah. good of that. Yeah. So. All right. Did you have any questions, Mike? Okay. Is everyone? All right. Well, I appreciate it. We thank you. Thanks. No, thank all you right. all. It's been a great session. We're good. Yeah, it, it has. It's very, very productive.